Hello and welcome to another episode of A Cuppa with Climb. This month I'm joined by SmartBear's API evangelist Frank Kilcommons to discuss the latest trends in API and the state of software quality in 2021. Frank, tell me, what is an API evangelist? Talk me through your role and what this means for SmartBear and their customers. Hi Hope, it's great to be here with you. Well, I guess the role of an API evangelist is all about spreading the word of APIs and helping the broader understanding of the role APIs play across so many industries. So effectively, I'm on a mission to engage with, support and hopefully inspire the API community as well as our SmartBear customers right across the end-to-end -end API lifecycle. Part of the role is, of course, also acting as that link between the API community and our product teams within SmartPair itself. That's great, thank you. We've got a lot to cover today. Here are the headlines. An overview of API, SmartBear's latest study, the state of software quality for APIs, why API development is moving towards a multi-protocol approach over REST, examples of how APIs are becoming synonymous with brands instead of just a business tool, how SmartBear solutions can help with all stages of the API lifecycle, and how Climb can help promote SmartBear solutions to their customers. There's no time to waste. Can you give us an overview of what is API and why is it so important? Yeah, sure. Well, APIs are the interfaces through which software applications and components communicate and exchange data. So they're the language for software applications. You could also think of them using a vehicle analogy and think of an API as a vehicle that transfers value from one place to another, but just in the world of software. Vehicles, of course, come in all shapes and sizes, but when you distill them down, they're effectively transferring people or goods from point A to point B. And it's exactly the same in the world of APIs. You know, APIs come in many different styles, but it's all about transferring data and business value between software applications. To touch on why they're so important in the modern day, well, you know, APIs are really resulting in the traditional boundaries of business and IT being dissolved. APIs really permeate most aspects of our personal and professional lives, you know, be it from controlling our home automation devices to managing our personal fitness and finance, and even enabling us to work from home over the last 18 months, which has been so important. You know, APIs are now really commonly classed as products in their own right. And organizational leaders are not fully aware of this. So they're, they're aware that they need to invest more in making their capabilities and their business value available in a form that allows them to participate in the digital economy. You know, in fact, investments in APIs is expected to grow by 37% in 2022 alone. So there's this need to be more relevant, to deal with increased competition, even just to meet the heightened consumer experience expectations. And this has all come together to contribute from APIs evolving from just technical requirements to really now being linchpin business priorities. That's really, really interesting. Thanks for that. And I really liked the car analogy. These areas of importance and the trends surrounding them are covered in SmartBear's latest study, the state of software quality for APIs. Why should resellers be interested in this study and discussing the latest trends with their customers? Well, we bring out a lot of reports each year at SmartBear and we've decided this year to group them all under the heading of state of software quality. And then we have specific editions for APIs, for testing and for code review. And this really you know, aligns with our view that quality is not just a goal, but it's the whole point. And I really believe the API reports can act as a useful knowledge base for your reseller community because it provides insights on how companies are succeeding or being challenged across several key stages of the API lifecycle, as well as providing useful information on what's coming next. You know, we're coming towards the end of 2021 now, and every company is an API company in some shape or form. So we've aggregated and analyzed the responses of over 1600 API practitioners from a diverse set of personas spanning 17 industry verticals to produce this report. And I believe, you know, regardless of the type of business your resellers are enabling or supporting, you can be sure that their customers are dealing with APIs or digital transformations of some sort. Thus, having a grounding on what's happening across the API landscape can really equip your resellers with the knowledge they need to discuss the API challenges and articulate trends with their own customers. I see. 
It seems like the evolution of APIs is moving so fast that resellers must keep up with the trends in order to recommend the right solutions to their customers. The study has many really insightful key findings, but we've picked out just a couple to cover today. The first of which being a shift towards a multi-protocol approach to API development. Of course, REST still dominates, but the study suggests that SOAP and other protocols such as GraphQL and Kafka are being used together. Can you expand on this? Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, we are indeed seeing that the REST style of APIs is still the most popular but we're increasingly seeing that new API standards and techniques are continuing to emerge to meet new challenges. And more than 81% of the respondents this year stated that they're using two or more protocols or styles, and 57% cited that they were using three or more flavors. So companies are now really coming to the realization that in order to give optimal consumer experiences, they end up using a combination of many styles and they actually complement each other. So it's no longer a one size fits all approach. So we all need to embrace that multiple styles are the new norm. You know, take for example, if you're online shopping and you're adding items to your shopping cart and then you complete that purchase transaction, well, most likely you did that using RESTful APIs. But it's very unlikely that you want to keep going back to that website and checking on the status of your tracking order. So it's very common that event-based APIs will, will come into play and the developers will use them to give an experience that allows them to emit the events as your order changes status. So then you get push notifications directly to your mobile phone to keep you updated. So it's a really much better experience. And we are seeing year on year that you know, newer technologies like GraphQL and Kafka are becoming more common. But all technologies like SOAP are still hanging around, especially for larger organizations. And what came back in the report this year very clearly is that companies are struggling to deliver at speed with the resources and the tools that are available to them. So they're just falling back on the skill sets and the technologies that they're familiar with in order to them to keep up with the demand being placed on them. So what I would say is we all need to get comfortable that new specifications, protocols and technologies will come along much, much faster than older ones will disappear. So it's very important that companies equip themselves with the right tools, allowing them to leverage any combination of API style. Absolutely. I must say it's come as a shock at how many APIs consumers use on a day to day basis. And I personally myself have noticed when the APIs have kind of let down the supply chain, if it were. This multi-protocol approach and seamless user experience is also changing how APIs are positioned in a business. They're now becoming synonymous with the brand um, they operate in. Is this correct? Yeah, very much so. You know, I think it all harps back to the point that APIs can no longer be regarded as IT artifacts. So they are products in their own right and they need to be managed and treated accordingly across the relevant functions and departments within an organization. You know, from a brand importance perspective, you really need to treat APIs the same as you would with more established products, even physical products. You know, don't underestimate the power of brand loyalty and the trust that that brings with it within your API program. You know, APIs are still, after all, consumed by people. So there's a developer on the other side trying to integrate and ingest that API into their experience. So the importance of that overarching developer experience cannot be overlooked. What I would say is all companies should strive to get to a place where their API products look and feel the same. So big brand affinity into it. Pay particular attention to enabling the consumer of the API to extract business value as quickly as possible. There's a proliferation of APIs out there. So it really can be your brand that helps you stand out from the crowd in the API marketplace. And what I would also say is that, you know, the voice of the developer and the architect is resonating more loudly within organizations. And if the first impressions of your API product does not meet their expectations, then they'll quickly move elsewhere. And this has been backed up by some of the findings we're also seeing this year where, you know, ease of use, accurate and detailed API docs, reliability and availability are all coming back as the main consumer expectations when it comes to looking at an API. And increasingly, what we're seeing is if developers hit a quality issue with the API or a poor experience, they will immediately start looking elsewhere and 32% cited that they would do that. 
And what I thought was very interesting is that 18% of respondents said that they would publicly vent on social media if they hit a quality issue. And that can really tarnish and impact your brand reputation. It is really clear that the stakes are really high then. Do you have examples of where APIs have become part of a brand? Yeah, like there, there's loads of examples. And um, if I was to pick a few that come to mind, I would say, you know, Amazon Web Services, AWS, you know, they've really pushed the envelope for API first over the last decade or so. And then you have other very popular companies like Stripe, Twilio, Uber. You know, all of these companies are really synonymous with APIs being their primary offering. If we, if we look at Stripe briefly, you know, they hyper focused on the developer experience and democratizing the act of setting up and taking payments. So they really had a focus on making something that was non-trivial for many teams and developers and making it very, very simple. So Stripe do the hard work on their side and they provide a beautifully simple API, allowing consumers to, you know, get payments set up in their system with just a couple of lines of code. So it really shows the power of good API design. That's really interesting, thank you. So resellers should really be prepared for offering solutions that can help end users with these alternative approaches to API development. How can SmartBez solutions help developers with all areas of the API lifecycle? Well, SmartBear offers a mix of commercial and open source toolings to support teams in collaborative workflows across many stages of the API development lifecycle. So looking briefly at some of our products for APIs, it's predominantly Swagger, which is our open source tooling offerings. Then we have Swagger Hub, which is our core product for managing API design, standardization and governance at scale. Then we have Ready API for testing, so be it functional, security or performance testing. And of course, that also supports rich mocking and virtualization. And then on the monitoring side, we have Alert Site. So we really understand the importance of collaboration and communication within the API lifecycle. So we want to ensure that we can equip teams with the tools to achieve fast feedback loops, streamlining their validation so that they can always be confident that they're abiding by the standards and the brand guidelines that we discussed being so important a little bit earlier. You know, it's all really about effectively empowering standardization and governance right across the API delivery lifecycle and being able to do so at scale that enables teams to focus on their business value and their functionality. At SmartBear, we have a rich history in API standards and specifications, having donated what is now the most popular standard for HTTP APIs, you know, then Swagger, but now known as the Open API specification to the Linux Foundation. And I really believe that these open standards improve the environment for API producers, API consumers, and of course, us as tooling providers. And at SmartBear, we'll always push to be at the forefront of these industry-wide initiatives. That's brilliant, and I couldn't agree more. Um, Climb and SmartBear have worked really closely together on this particular episode of A Couple with Climb to provide resellers with everything they need to know to promote SmartBear to their customers working in API development. We've put together a page on our website where this video will be hosted alongside an array of assets and product recommendations. It includes a link to the study that we've referenced today, as well as Frank's own keynote speech from the yearly SmartBear Connect event. It's been an honor speaking to you today, Frank. Thank you so much for coming on the episode. Thank you very much, Hope. It was my pleasure. In today's episode, we have covered the following. An overview of API, SmartBear's latest study, the state of software quality for APIs, why API development is moving towards a multi-protocol approach over REST, Examples of how APIs are becoming synonymous with brands instead of just a business tool. How SmartBear solutions can help with all stages of the API lifecycle. And how Climb can help resellers promote SmartBear to their customers. It's certainly been really eye-opening for me. I feel fully emerged in the world of APIs and business transformation now. I hope our viewers and specifically resellers feel empowered by this episode to go out and promote SmartBear. Any final comments from you, Frank? I really hope your community finds our conversation useful and I would warmly invite any of your resellers to reach out if they have any questions. Thank you to everyone for joining us today for the latest episode of A Cuppa with Climb. If you'd like to find out more about how SmartBears solutions can support developers, check out our new landing page on the website or get in touch with our business development manager, Rod McPhee. 
The links and contact details will be listed at the end of this video and in the video description box below. Until next time, bye. Bye.